Hey, welcome to our scene on osteopetrosis, represented by the osteo patrol. These are the patrol up here. They patrol the osteos. Osteos are bones. Here are the bones down here, and these helicopters patrol and make sure they're okay. So osteo patrol for osteopetrosis. So what's going on over here is that there's an osteo class over here. The bones are having their class over here, and they want to get protected. This class, however, is going to be destroyed. It's going to explode. This does to help us remember that it is the defective osteoclasts which are responsible for osteopetrosis. More specifically, the defective osteoclasts, represented by the class exploding, leads to failure of normal bone resorption. Normally, osteoclasts break down bone, and since they're defective in osteopetrosis, the bones will not break down normally. Now, this might sound good, right? right? Don't we want to have thick bones? No, thick, dense bones are not good because they're actually more prone to fracture. Now, look at this helicopter over here. He drops some DNA and the DNA explodes, and it causes the lemon to explode. So the DNA exploding refers to the mutations, specifically in carbonic anhydrase 2, which is inside osteoclasts, and this leads to the lemon exploding, which refers to the acidic environment. Normally, osteoclasts require an acidic environment to break down bone, but in this mutation of carbonic anhydrase 2, the acidic environment will not be made, and thus bone resorption cannot be done because the res bone resorption relies on an acidic environment. So that is the pathophysiology of osteopetrosis. Let's talk now about the symptoms. So conveniently, this osteoclast is learning about osteopetrosis. As the teacher mentioned, osteopetrosis is failure of normal bone resorption due to defective osteoclasts, which leads to thick and dense bone that are prone to fracture. Okay, and due to the overgrowth of cortical bone that fills bone marrow space, there's going to be pancytopenia and extramedullary hematopoiesis. And due to the narrowed foramina, osteopetrosis can result in cranial nerve impingement, which can of course lead to palsies. On the board over here, the teacher stuck an x-ray picture of the diffuse symmetric sclerosis seen in osteopetrosis, which is basically bone in bone, and it's more whitish as you can see over here. Okay, just a word on treatment. So the only treatment really available that could potentially do anything is bone marrow transplant. This is potentially curative because osteoclasts are derived from monocytes. So the monocytes in the new bone marrow can evolve into new osteoclasts, which are not defective. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this scene on osteopetrosis. Alrighty, take care.